What is Jupyter's new blockchain called JupeNet? Let's explain like I'm 10 years old and work this out. So let's start here with Twitter. Meow is the co-founder and lead cat at Jupyter Exchange and right here pinned JupeNet and Omnichain network. Well, the first thing is people aren't gonna understand what an Omnichain blockchain is because these are not normally spoken about. In a simple way, you're talking about a blockchain that can connect to different bridges and different networks and work seamlessly so that you can onboard more liquidity and buy and sell and do whatever it is you wanna do across multiple blockchains. It's essentially allowing assets and data transactions to move freely between them. No one's done this amazingly well. If we come on down, we do have some risks with scalability efficiency. Security is a big one. And then there are some examples of implementations. Cosmos, which they've got things kind of working okay. They've got the IBC route that allows you to communicate between each thing, but nothing is amazing over there. Polkadot, they may be doing okay. They've been kind of building for years and years and years with no actual proper adoption. And Layer Zero, I'm not too familiar with them to be perfectly honest. Meow has an essay on the subject going over the oracles, which are called Doves, an Omnichain Ledger Network, which will cover the aggregated decentralized identity, just a simple way to sign transactions for the individual person, and a few other things, basically aggregating everything. Now, a lot of people don't even understand what aggregate means. Aggregate means like the whole of something, basically taking everything and making it connected so it is kind of a the whole. As an example, Jupiter and One Inch, if you're from Ethereum, these are aggregators in that they go to all the different decentralized exchanges. As an example, Meteora, Orca, Affinity, Radium, as an example. And they can pull trades from all these different sources and they put it through one different route. So this is what it looks like on one particular blockchain. One inch does the same thing. It will go off to QuickSwap and Uniswap and SushiSwap and all the different DEXs as well. Before we get into the slides, I'll kind of paint a little bit of a picture. Imagine you have five or 10 different islands. There's all these different little islands and these are all different blockchains. You've got Solana, you've got Polygon, you have Optimism, you've got Base, you've got Ethereum, you've got Sui, you've got Bitcoin as an example. All these different little islands everywhere. And in order to get from one network to another, you have to like take a boat or there's a bridge built. There's a bridge, but going from one network to another, all of a sudden you get there, it's a different language. There are different things you need to learn and it takes time as well and it costs fees. There's a toll booth every time you cross on this particular bridge. So now in previous cycles, people have come along and they've said, well, you're fragmenting all of this attention into different places. So let's just make a better blockchain and everyone will come to ours. We'll make it faster and whatever. However, as you make it faster, issues happen. Like Solana is you know, the fastest, most used blockchain that's actually properly used. Sui probably up there as well. But when you stress this, these things, they kind of break. We're not ready for pure decentralization. Then you go the other way where it is very much decentralized, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and they just can't handle the actual in real life demand for blockchain. Bitcoin, I don't know how many transactions it does, but like less than 10 per second. Ethereum is like 15 to 18, and the fees are quite sizable. Whereas ultimately you want to be able to do in the future 100,000 or even a million transactions per second to really get through everything that you want to do. So the JupeNet approach is kind of taking a photo of everything down there and just making a map. And then that map is its own blockchain and it will know what's happening over on Ethereum, what's happening on Polygon, Base and Sui and Solana. And then you can go from blockchain to blockchain on JupeNet Buying and selling tokens, it's not going to be for liquidity providing as far as I'm aware. Like there's not going to be Uniswap on JupeNet as an example. But you'll be able to buy the token from Ethereum using your Solana and then it's going to be kind of connected in some way, I don't understand everything, to your JupeNet ID. It will still be on the Ethereum blockchain, but all the transactions will be recorded actually on JupeNet. And then if you wanted to swap from Ethereum on Ethereum to Sui on Sui, you could just do it 
via dupe.com and the transactions would go through. And the exact way that it works, that I'm not entirely sure on. But essentially, the easiest way to understand it is imagine a centralized exchange like Binance or Bybit, but instead of it being a centralized exchange, it's now a new blockchain. So let's go over some of these slides. The first thing that is very important are the doves, and doves are the oracles. You've got the omnichain ledger. If you don't know what the word ledger means, just think of it like a massive Excel spreadsheet where every single transaction is put on there. And in this particular occasion, it needs all the transactions from all the different blockchains and an aggregated decentralized identity. So you have a Soulflare wallet, you've got a MetaMask wallet, you've got a SUI wallet. All these are just different things. And if you're crypto native and like obsessed, it kind of works, you make it work. But in an ideal world, you have one thing that allows you to tap into each blockchain. And this is how the JupeNet thing is gonna work. It's gonna have a key that you can export if you need to, but you can go and buy and sell whatever you want on different blockchains, that's fine, but it's just gonna be one kind of identity. Once again, this is just, as far as I'm aware, more for like buying and selling, it's not gonna be necessarily for like governance or LPing or NFTs or whatever else, DeFi loans, unsure on all those things. They could come in the future, but for now, it's basically the product market fit of a blockchain, which is maybe 95% or more of all activity is buying and selling tokens. Everything else is kind of the future or a speculation point like NFTs. So we'll cover the DUV first. So decentralized oracles that validate and execute. Essentially, all we're talking about here is this is a competitor to PIF and Chainlink. The DUV system is quite complex, quite technical. We'll cover it a little bit, but it's basically just a way to get a price, that price feeds into the blockchain via an API, and you've got a reliable price on a particular asset. The issue is it needs to work across all of the blockchains that are actually being supported. The goal with doves, doves drive simplicity yet trustworthy. So you've got your JupeNet with doves, and then the next step is doves. This is the Oracle and the validator and the executor. So this does everything here. Otherwise the current system is you have Pith, and then you've got the Solana blockchain, and then you've got different code to make sure that it all executes. And it's all in like a little bundle that you kind of make work. As an example, we can get Flocky, the price from the BNB blockchain, and then that will feed it onto the decentralized Omnichain ledger. It knows what that actual price is via the Dove. It does everything, adds it to the blockchain, it gets the price and it executes that price on the blockchain. And then you've got the decentralized Omnichain ledger, which of course, that's what the users integrate with and play with. Now, if I'm losing you, please just stick around. Dupe is gonna be massive. And if you're not bullish enough, it's important to know this. This is in beta, we'll cover that a little bit later on. And when it goes to mainnet, it will take some time for it to be like really trustworthy, of course. There'll be audits and hackathons and all sorts of things to be bug bounties, as you'd expect. There's a lot of trust here and you do need the best of the best in order to make this happen. Let's just quickly cover oracles, traditional oracles. So Oracle 1 fetches data. Oracle 2, they fetch the data, it goes to validator. Oracle 3 fetches data, it goes to another different validator and then goes to an Oracle program and then it gets executed on blockchain. And how it's supposed to work, from my understanding with JupeNet, is you're on base and you wanna go and buy this token, you know, a new token. You go to jupe.com, you've got your base USDC, and you go and you sell it for Trump. And there'll be some magic voodoo cool stuff in the middle. Probably what's gonna happen is someone's gonna buy automatically it from you on the Solana blockchain, and then it's gonna credit into your passport or your kind of your identity with Trump. And how it works is this deposit, this 100 or 1,000 USDC or 1,000 random tokens from base will come on. The DAV will go and communicate, working out the value, and it'll execute that you've got this value. And then it will verify to the external chains that you own it, that you not only own it, it has a certain value, and then it agrees, okay, it has this value, puts on the ledger, you can then go and swap that for Trump. And of course it needs to do this very, very quickly. Otherwise, you know, maybe it takes a few minutes at best to actually go and do this or if you use a centralized exchange under huge load, it can take hours. Sometimes it takes days with Coinbase and Solana to actually release their tokens. This needs to be done super fast, ideally within a couple of seconds. When there's withdrawal time, you have a withdrawal intent. So you say, I would like to withdraw Trump as an example. It's probably gonna be 
held in a wallet that you control, but you probably have to withdraw it to like your Soulflare wallet as an example. It goes via the Dove system again and submits the withdrawal transaction with an aggregated signature to the LP programs, then to the user. All this part here, not entirely sure. I mean, the LP programs, not exactly perfectly sure what it's doing here. Like it's not gonna be liquidity providing your Trump tokens as far as I'm aware, but you're basically gonna have your Trump tokens and they will be withdrawn via this system. Now the future, we need more podcasts, we need more information in order to work out what it is. But this is a multi-chain liquidity in a single place, enabling developers to build protocols that utilize tokens from any chain, enabling users to buy any tokens from any chain as soon as token generation event happens. The bottom thing is something I understand more thus far, and that is, as I said, a new token comes on, it's hot. Elon Musk does it in actual meme coin. Maybe he launches it on what network? BNB chain, who knows? Maybe he becomes buddies with CZ. In order to get that, people could use dupe.com and they could buy it as fast as if you were actually on BNB chain or relatively as fast. Now, how do the transactions actually work? So you have external chains, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and Sui, it's not there, but that's how it is. And it goes through this normal verification stage but then they've got two different ways to make sure that there's short-term and long-term checking to ensure that there's no you know, nasty, fake, double spending kind of transactions. Everything else, I'm not gonna lie, if you understand this, well done. You are in a very small minority. Long so, JubeNet has some issues because it itself doesn't have issues, but other blockchains can reverse transactions. They can roll back transactions. Exactly how they get around that relates to their, their system of preventing replays. Precisely what happens, I'm honestly not 100% sure. It's best that I understand the things that I understand well. And one of the things I understand well is what if a user didn't have to custody a private key? Using your Google or your Apple, you can then recover an account. Or it's permissionless, it's non-custodial. There's a delegate authority on the actual wallet that can allow you to actually gain access to that wallet if required. And they have ZK identity. ZK is really cool stuff. It's a little bit complex, but I understand it a lot better these days. Zero knowledge. Basically, it works like this. What if you didn't have to dox to prove your identity? You have an Apple account, and then you have a JupeNet wallet. JupeNet can connect to your Apple account, know that you're a real person, but it doesn't know that you're John Smith. But it knows that there's an Apple account there, and that this is actually a person, and they can sign the transaction, and it knows that this person controls this particular private key. Whereas Apple, it gets connected to this interface, but it doesn't know due to ZK tech that it's actually even crypto related. I don't understand how that works, but it doesn't know that this is crypto because not everyone's gonna be okay with that. Gmail, the same kind of technology. So pretty much everyone in the world has Gmail or Apple. There might be other systems set up in the future as well, but it's done in such a way that you're not doxing yourself. Even if you've got a wallet with a whole lot of tokens in it, that is not linked to you in a way where people know that your wallet is actually belonging to John Smith. The final thing is different signing schemes, a unified signer. So logging with Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. I guess the goal here is you can interact with JupeNet and kind of participate with the ADI in a way where you don't actually have to go and set up a new wallet. You can use whatever wallet you're comfortable with from whatever blockchain that's supported. And with all the magical ZK tech, it just works. Now, if you found that complex, I get it. I understand. Currently, the network's in testnet, and it's expected that actual mainnet beta would be out in a few months. So that's pretty exciting. There's been many different acquisitions from the Jupyter team, and some of those people are actually working on this stuff. Pre-quantum, quantum, really, really complex stuff. Now you might have some questions like, will there be a token? I don't know. I imagine the token would be Jupe. They could launch a different token. Of course they could but it's probably gonna be a better idea that it's just dupe. That way there's a lot more value to dupe. It's one particular token. There's nothing else to worry about. You don't have to decide, do you wanna hold dupe or something else? Another thing to keep in mind is, what does this mean for the future of Dbridge and other bridges? Dbridge will still have its time and it will still probably be used, of course, but it does kind of reduce, in my opinion, the actual necessity of using Dbridge, but that may take a couple of years to actually happen. Same with other bridges. The reality is it's too complex. It requires a tutorial video 
and the UI and the UX of the internet, the next generation of the internet, can't be that complex. Another question you might be asking is, what does this mean for Solana? Well, I don't think it's going to mean anything. Nothing bad anyway. Some people deem it's maybe competing in some aspect. The reality is this kind of binds the Solana ecosystem to other ecosystems. And it's really about just growing the pie, just having more people being able to onboard in an easier way. If you are into market making, LPing, NFTs, governance, you're still going to need to use Solana itself. But if you just want to buy and sell between different tokens, then this is probably what is going to work out for you. I also think of this as a little bit of a Infinex competitor, in a sense. Infinex is slightly different. It's going to have a far easier UI, and it's not going to be as complex as JupNet. But it is a competitor, in a sense. And then what is the grand vision? So there's something called the Global Unified Market, and this is called GUM. This is a coined term by Meow, and Cash and Meow have spoken about this at length in the planetary calls. Essentially, if you could imagine buying any of your stocks, if you could buy gold or silver or different currencies or any of your random tokens, that would be the global unified market. That would be all done on chain. And that's the long-term vision. It won't happen this cycle. I really don't think it would happen this cycle. But it could start to happen towards the end, grow more in the bear market, and then the next bull cycle really start to be far more relevant. This would also allow you to have like RWAs or buying bits of real estate. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this is just major, major experimentation. Not everything will work. Things will have to pivot. And that's kind of okay. If you've known Jupiter as long as I have, you know that they've worked on little side things that haven't always worked out. In their core stuff that they're really good at, Meteor stuff, swaps, all that kind of stuff, They've actually excelled better than everybody else, but sometimes it took a little bit of time for others to recognize that. Like Meteor is having its place to shine right now. It took a little bit of time to actually grow the TV up. Jupe itself has been doing well for, well, basically since 2021. So moving forward, and of course this is not financial advice, but I do see Jupe as probably one of the most undervalued tokens out there. It has a decent market cap. It's far smaller than Hypes, and I do think it's far more valuable than hype. So do with that information however you must. I'm bullish on dupe. Take a dupe, go and stake a dupe, or learn to DLMM and go and buy dupe. Generate fees, sell it for a higher price, compound your positions, do whatever it is that you want to do. At the end of the day, the vast, vast majority of everybody in crypto really cares about number go up, I trade something and it gives me more value. So this is a perfect example of going to where the users are as opposed to dreaming about something that could be really, really effective in a few years or in 10 years. Now is the time to capitalize on something which is very worthwhile and then build in all the things that could be far more helpful for, say, censorship resistance, adding more validators to the network, making that tech easier to understand, etc. By the way, one final thing, JupeNet will be an SVM, so it's a Solana virtual machine. So they're forking the open source code of Solana, making some modifications, but it is built as an SVM. That's all for this video. I'll be covering JupeNet far more because I'm very bullish on it. So make sure you're subscribed for future videos. Whoa. Hmm? Ah. Uh, yeah.